Hello gatekeepers and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you all my birth kit, which includes all the items I use during my free birth. So here it is guys. This is not the actual basket that I'm going to use um, the day of my labor. I just kind of put it all together in here so that I could present it to you all. So let's get right into it. Okay, you guys already know this book is a manual. I love this book. If you are preparing for a free birth, this book is invaluable. You need to have this book. Again, I'll link it in the description below, but this book is just a wealth of knowledge and um, it's, it's really a guide, like a how-to labor, types of labor, pain management, labor, positions for labor, stages of labor, your baby's here, the first hour after you give birth, postpartum care, your baby, placenta delivery, placenta consumption, all the things. And so she even goes through emergency situations, what to do in those situations. So this is just a beautiful guide to have with you. Um, if something's happening, like, oh my gosh, like my labor's stalling. Let me see what Heather says. And then you kind of just go read and, you know, it's not a must have, but I love it. I love just having it there easily accessible. Like if I forgot something or I'm like, what is that herb I need to take right now? Because my back, you know, and you have this readily accessible to you. And next, you need your chucks pad, chuck pads, chucks pads, however you say it. This is just one of those things that just kind of makes things easier as far as cleanup where for me I personally haven't experienced like a crazy like a messy type of labor like everything was pretty contained there wasn't much fluids until like transition when like baby was coming out that's usually when my water breaks that's usually when the mucus plug falls out so anything before then it's pretty dry but these are just awesome to have on hand like if you're laying in your bed um okay so let me get into that first of all um as you're gonna see as we go through this video i'm pretty minimalistic when it comes to like everything and especially birth where it's like all you really need is just yourself because you are the host you have the baby in your body that's really all you need of course there's things that that make things easier or or more comfortable or just like preparing the atmosphere type of items that people want but for the most part you really don't need much and so as far as bed goes bed preparation i know that some people like to have like their bed fully protected and so they'll do like a mattress protector and then they'll put a sheet over that fit a sheet and then a flat sheet and then they'll do another uh, mattress protector and then they'll put the fitted sheet and flat sheet just so that like the, the you could just kind of rip it off and then have clean sheets under that one. Um, but um, I just I don't do that personally just because like what I just said about um, not really having a messy type of birth. I mean, it could be different this time around. I'm like, dang, I should have got a mattress protector. But I don't think that's going to be the case. And so um, Chuck's pads are just awesome because like if you're sitting on your birth ball, you can have your, you could just put this on top of your birth ball and you're just on there bouncing, you know, doing your thing. If you want to lay on your bed, um, you could just have this under you just in case. Um, and um, if you're going to be walking around, if you have rug, um, you could just put these in certain places on the rug that you'll be walking. Again, just in case you have any type of amniotic fluid flowing out or you pee or something. And so Chuck's pads, they're just so awesome to have. Next, I have my plastic drop cloth made in the USA. Let's go. Um, yes, this I got this time around. Last time I didn't because I, I had just like tile floor. And um, I was just like, you could just wipe that up. This time we have carpets in our bedrooms. So I'm like, let's get a, a plastic drop cloth. And we'll just lay that out in like the general area that I'm going to be. And then we'll put a nice sheet over that. And then our rug is protected. So this is a must have if you have some rugs or areas that you just don't want to get messed up or stained. 
Next is the Elden blood typing kit. I love knowing what my children's blood type is. And so I make sure to get this so that I know what blood is coursing through my child's veins. My children, yes, all of them, all of my children and myself, we all have the same blood type. So I always make sure to get this just so I know what blood type my child has. Next, I have my gauze and povidine iodine. Povidine iodine would be used in a situation where, say, you push the baby out and then you're like experiencing like some bleeding and you need to be able to see what's going on. So you would squirt this or spray this and um, it's it's uh, it doesn't sting. It's water soluble and it just kind of clears the area. You would use the gauze wipe and kind of see, OK, what's going on? You know, is there a tear? Is, it, is she just hemorrhaging? Like what's going on? What you're working with after you pushed baby out? So these two are must have. I didn't use them last time because I didn't need it, but I want to be prepared in case it is something that I need. Next, I have Arnica oil with St. John Wurtz. And so this is something that I didn't use last time either. But as I was thinking, I was like, it'd be nice to like have the kids and my husband just massaging me and helping me, you know, through my pains if I'm having back labor and things like that. Arnica oil is just it helps with aches and pains and stiffness. And then St. John's wort, um, St. John's worts is pretty much similar, but more in a sense like it's like a nerve ending. So like people that are dealing with like sciatica um, and things like that. And I'm not dealing with sciatica, but back contractions hurt and so the infusion of both of them is just awesome so i was just like let me get this because i'm sure the kids are gonna want to help out and and want to rub me and help and stuff like that so i'm like let me get an oil so that they could help mama out so this is the oil by wish garden it's arnica oil with saint john Wurtz. and don't worry all of this is going to be listed below and so now let's let me move this basket because it's like so awkward here dun, 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 dun. all right so now let's get into the tinctures so these are let me turn around i can't grab them like that these are the four tinctures that i think are extremely important to have on hand last time i did not use um, my shepherd's purse um or the blue cohosh I definitely did use the Angelica. Remember that retained placenta? <laughs> the Angelica tincture really helped me. All right, so let's go through these one by one. So Shepherd's Purse is extremely important postpartum if you are experiencing hemorrhaging. So what this miracle herb would do is it would literally stop the hemorrhaging in its track so what you, what you do is you'd follow the suggested use which is i think one to three droppers full you'd wait a couple minutes and and see if the hemorrhaging stops like it liter literally works that fast and if the hemorrhaging doesn't stop that means the issue is deeper and then you're most likely going to need a transfer things like that but this is really good to have on hand in case you're experiencing hemorrhaging and you want to stop that hemorrhaging naturally so shepherd's purse is super important to have. And like I said, I didn't use it last time. Thank you, Jesus. I didn't need to use it. But because I know emergency situations can take place, I want to be prepared for them. Next, I have the Angelica tincture. This one helped me tremendously in my last free birth because I had a retained placenta for 21 hours. If you have not seen that video, make sure you go check it out. But what Angelica oil does is it it causes like very, very strong uterine contractions. And so this helps you pass your placenta. So having this on hand helped me so much because my contractions pretty much were just like dying down at that point. My uh, placenta was not birthed. It was not coming out. And I had to use the Angelica to get things going again, to kick back, to rev those contractions up and get them consistent and I was just taking it for a long time and then when I need the rest I stopped taking this anyway that you gotta watch the video but this is super important just to have on hand if you have one of those crazy variations of normal that your placenta just doesn't want to come out yet it's not ready to be born angelica tincture will really help you so this is great to have on hand black cohosh 
is used to ripen the cervix. So I had used this. I would mix it in like my red raspberry leaf tea or in my pineapple date smoothies and I would just kind of mix it in there to help prepare my uterus, soften my uterus. It doesn't cause contractions or anything like that. It's just more like a a natural aid to get things going and just aiding your cervix and softening and ripening. And so I would just use this. Uh, I, I didn't use it frequently or anything like that. I think it was just like the last couple of days before I actually had my son. And so I can't really tell you if it did that or not. In addition to pineapple and dates, because those are also cervix ripening things that you can take. So I think it was just a great concoction and it got me ready and my cervix soft and ripened and all the things. So if that's something you're looking into, like what are all the things that I can do to ripen my cervix and just ready my cervix type of thing, I would look into black cohosh. And lastly on the tincture list is the blue cohosh. This one I didn't use. Basically this one is used to begin contractions or to like strengthen weaker ones. So if you're like having irregular contractions or just um, stalled labor, things like that, you could just use blue cohosh to help you, to aid you in getting those contractions stronger and more consistent and add some umph to those contractions. That's why you would use blue, blue, <laughs> blue cohosh. That is what you would use blue cohosh for. I didn't use it, um, but if maybe this time around, maybe I'm experiencing stalled labor or my contractions are pretty weak or whatever the case is, I'll definitely give it a try. And it's just something good to have on hand so that you're just not um, like there's things you could use that can help your body progress. And it's like if you have it and it's natural and it works, use it. So that's blue cohosh. All right, let's do a little ASMR. <laughs> okay let's talk homeopathics so oops so these are four that i'm like they're must-haves like i need to have them on hand just in case all right the first one being aconite so this one you would you would use when like your contractions are super painful they're super intense and it's literally like producing a fear in you so you would take the recommended dosage which is five to six pellets dispensed in the cap and then put in your mouth directly in your mouth you never want to put homeopathics on your hand because it reacts with the oils and it could be like less effective all that stuff so in the cap right in your mouth you take this and it'll help you with with um, those feelings of fear and even to the extent of like this is so painful i'm gonna die like it helps you in those moments so that's aconite Arnica Montana, this should be in every single person's like first aid kit. Like everyone needs this in their home. It's just like a natural pain reliever. So you would take this if you're just like in pain, you know, and just needing some type of aid to help you with your pain. If you're feeling stiff, if you're feeling bruised and sore during labor, you would take this and it'll it'll help you as much as it can. It's not gonna be like some <laughs> crazy like norco type of drug that just takes away all the pain and stuff but it definitely will help you naturally next you have cali carbonicum which you can also take if you're experiencing irregular contractions or if all your contractions are are, are like mostly in the back like you're experiencing posterior labor your back is just like on fire you feel like your back is breaking even fear of dying um cali carbonicum really helps as well and so one thing that i did last time was i didn't really um when i bought the cali carbonicum i didn't really look at the dosages because if you look at homeopathics you see like they have like a six and a 30 and a 200 obviously the higher the number the stronger the dosage is I mean, the stronger and the more potent it is. And so this time I made sure to get a 200 because I'm like, I want the most like effect that I can get. I want the most potency. I'm believing that this labor is going to be fast. And I'm also believing that I'm not going to have crazy back pain like I have all the rest of my labors. So this is just on hand. If I do experience that or I need some help, and I'm just like, Lord Jesus, my back, pass me the Kelly. 
get the Kelly. <laughs> lastly, magnesium phosphorico or magphos for short. I feel like I might need this one this time around because I've been getting like crazy Charlie horses and just like kind of like cramps all the time. Like, I'm like, oh my gosh, like a leg goes up and it's like cr completely cramped out all crazy. So this mag magnesium will really help with um, cramps and also like radiating nerve pain. So if you're just like experiencing like these shooting crazy nerve pains during labor, you would take this and it will help you. And so MagFoss is something else I have deemed necessary for my birth kit. And guys, that is pretty much it. Like I told you, my I'm very minimalistic when it comes to the things I need, especially this being my fifth child. Along the way, you just kind of realize like what you don't need and what you really do need. And so I had my last free birth experience and I was like, OK, I didn't use these items. Won't get them again. Um, I didn't need to use these, but I'm still going to have them on hand just in case because every birth is different. But um, aside from this and my birth ball, which is in my shower, just any reg, um, regular yoga ball, exercising type of ball, um, I got mine like a week ago and I've been loving it so much. I've just been bouncing on it all day and just stretching because you could do things on a birth ball that you can't do when you're not on the birth ball. So I'm on it and I'm just like stretching. I'm like, whoa, look at how far I could stretch my leg right now. Wow. And it's been so great at relieving pressure and helping me like with my pubic bone pain and stuff like that. And during labor, it's awesome to get things, you know, contractions going and um, being being able to be in certain, like I said, certain positions that you wouldn't be able to be on if you weren't on the ball. And so just to help you be more open and all the things, birth ball, towels, which will be in the dryer the day of. Um, because I want them warm and when they're needed you just kind of hey Justice Victory Valor Honor why don't you go bring me a, a towel and you have your towel ready and that is pretty much it that is my exhaustive list of what I use and what I feel I need for my free birth and um, I was very specific in this video as far as like saying for a free birth because I know home births um, if you're using like a midwife, it's different because sometimes they have like a prepared birth kit that they want you to purchase and then it just has all these items. And I've gone that route. My son Valor was a home birth with a midwife and, um, the list was so long and I probably used like five things on the, on, on that list. And so, like I said, along the way, you just kind of you learn, okay, this is really what's needed and all the other stuff we could just kind of do away with. And so this was my personal list of what I, I feel is important for a free birthing mama who's at home with just her hubby and her kiddos and maybe some family, no, no medical help. And I feel like these are the items that are needed. And then as far as the uh, placenta goes, um, just a metal bowl, a metal bowl to have it in once it's passed and stuff. And then for the umbilical cord, you can either get a cord clamp. Last time I, I bought a cord clamp and the scissors, but this time I don't want to do that. I want to do like a cord burning ceremony. So I'm going to get the little wooden box and then just the beeswax candles we have here. And then we're just all going to kind of do it together and burn it and wait for it to come apart and another thing that I just remember that I don't have in this temporary little basket is a fish scale and so you'd use the fish scale to weigh the baby so if you want to know how much your baby weighed at birth you just attach like a receiving blanket you'd clip it in there and you hold it up and then you're able to weigh the baby so that was another thing that I felt was important to have because I'm like I want to know how much my baby weighs if you're interested on my blog, www.closequartersmom.com, in my shop, um, I have a freebie section and I'll have my free birth checklist available there for download. So if you're interested, head there now and make sure you download that. And I hope it helps you in preparing and just having a checklist, something that you could tangibly look at and check off uh, while you're preparing for your free birth. And also, 
um, in my shop, I have birth affirmations and that's something I don't have right here yet because I still haven't printed them out for myself. I need to like ASAP because literally I felt like I was going to have my baby yesterday. I was contracting like crazy for like multiple hours on end and I'm like, oh my gosh, baby's coming, but it stopped. didn't happen. So I need to print these, but, um, in my shop, on my blog, closequartersmom.com, I have these beautiful birth affirmations that we created and they are just the most beautiful, simple, minimalistic, just beautiful little cards to look at with birth affirmations that you can just um, use to decorate your space or to set up the atmosphere that you want for your birth. And those will also be on my shop. So if you're interested, you can head there now and just check it out. So that's it, guys. These are all the goodies that I use during my free birth. I also wanted to mention that I'll be shooting another video all about preparing for a free birth preparation and mentally, physically, emotionally, because there's so much that goes into preparing for a free birth. It's so much more than a checklist with items that you need for the actual day, but the whole preparation during your pregnancy and your mindset and preparing to do something that pretty much goes against the norm, you know, and helping you and teaching you and showing you how to trust your body and understand the physiological process of birth. And it's like when you understand the physiological process of birth like your confidence is just unshakable because you're like no i understand how birth works and i can't be bullied into anything less than this this is what i want i want a free birth i want to have my baby at home and i can do this and me and my baby will be healthy and just kind of ridding yourself of all the fears man-made fears societal fears because of xyz so stay tuned for that thank you so much for watching if you're a free birthing mama and you have different things on your checklist or in your birth kit i would love to know what you got in your arsenal comment down below let me know what you got going and if you have any questions specifically about any of these products um, leave them down in the comment section below as well. I would love to get back to you. And again, all the items that I listed today or that I spoke about today, I'll list down below in the description box. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.